Hello and welcome to another session of Groundbreakers Live. I'm your host, Javed Mohammed, and we're very honored to have with us today Zoran Savaraj, who is a Java champion, is an associate professor at the University of Belgrade, is an AI researcher and the CEO of DeepNets, and he's got a much longer bio, but I'll try to keep it short. Zoran, welcome. Hello, Javed. Thank you for having me. Pleasure okay. to join you. And uh, just for the audience out there, you would probably see that we both have the same backdrop. Uh, and that's the, the wonders of Zoom and virtual reality that even though he's in Belgrade, I'm in, I'm in not in San Francisco, but in the Bay Area, uh, we are virtually brought together or almost in one place. This is cool. Yeah, Zoom bringing us together. Exactly. So Zoran, uh, I see you're going to be uh, speaking you know, and presenting in the EMEA Groundbreakers tour, a virtual tour 2020. Uh, so yes. you have a presentation, Enhance Your Java Application with Deep Learning. So the first question I had for you was, just for the benefit of the audience again, and even for myself, what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Well, deep learning is uh, one specific machine learning technique. Mm -hmm. uh, machine learning is like uh, 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 one of the AI techniques, and deep learning is one very specific type of machine learning. It is a type of advanced machine learning, which can provide uh, uh, much higher accuracy with large amounts of data. So that would be the main point. There are many other uh, details, but uh, let's leave that for the presentation. Okay, so, so just, just, just kind of go under the hood and just give us a sense. So you said it provides more accuracy, but, but what, what does that mean? I mean, so just give us an idea of like, what does it involve? So when you say deep learning, so, 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 so yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with traditional machine learning, as the amount of uh, data uh, grows, uh, uh, the accuracy grows, but at some point uh, there is stagnation. Uh, data, mm -hmm. amount of data starts, uh, continues to grow, but the accuracy uh, stays the same. And with deep learning, uh, theoretically, as the data amount increases uh, the accuracy increases so mm. it can uh, handle uh, much better the larger amounts of data okay. and it can uh, handle uh, very well some uh, uh, very specific use cases which uh, include uh, very high dimensional data which means uh, uh, something that ha have many inputs many values uh, and uh, examples of that will be for, for example image recognition, where each pixel represents an input to the model and one relatively small uh, 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 image, 100 by 100 pixels can have 10, 30,000 inputs. And uh, there are deep learning models, so-called convolutional neural networks, which can handle very well uh, that amount of uh, inputs and a uh, uh, high amount of data. Okay, so actually you, you went on to my next question, which is a good probably segue about use cases. So you talk about image recognition. Uh, that's probably one of them. Um, I think in your presentation, you also talked about sp spam classification. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, at this, uh, since there, there are many uh, potential use cases and definitely we cannot cover all of them in one session, but uh, uh, I'm going to explain some of the uh, most basic techniques. Uh, all of them come down to a machine learning task by classification and regression. And uh, image recognition is uh, most uh, often comes down to image classification. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll explain how can that be useful in practice. Basically, uh, these models can learn how to do something. The advantage is that in traditional programming, you have to encode fixed rules and you have to maintain them. And with machine learning, if you have a machine learning component, then you can uh, make a part of your system learn how to do something with uh, 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 high accuracy. It cannot be 100% accurate, but uh, it, it can give a uh, satisfactory level of accuracy which can be usable and which can automate and reduce cost or effort that, that would need to be uh, performed by human workers. So okay. uh, uh, image recognition is one of the dom application domains where uh, deep learning uh, have really uh, moved, uh, improved accuracy a lot and uh, are much better than other techniques. And that's why it is uh, very popular. And we are going to cover one interesting use case with the uh, parking lot 
occupancy on which we will demonstrate all these concepts uh, which can be uh, then applied to uh, uh, any other problem. Okay, all right. So your presentation is also, you, you mentioned about enhancing your Java up to deep learning. So, so what's the position of Java with uh, respect to deep, uh, with uh, respect to machine learning? Yes. Well, uh, when people say machine learning and deep learning, a uh, few last years, they're all saying Python. Yes, Python is the main language for that. And even the frameworks are like uh, TensorFlow, they, they provided first uh, Python support. And uh, uh, Java was, uh, uh, there was a feeling that Java is behind all of that AI machine learning race. And, uh, but uh, actually Java, developers and uh, Oracle, they were all working on that, uh, to providing uh, really good support for machine learning in Java ecosystem. And uh, uh, recently we have many uh, interesting developments in that area. Uh, I, I, myself, I'm working on uh, JSR 381. That's a standard, a Java a standard for uh, visual recognition API, uh, which is under public review and which will be released uh, these days officially. Then Oracle has uh, also uh, released this open source Trivio, which is a uh, uh, machine learning library. And uh, uh, I think that uh, Java developers will get a really good opportunity to uh, add machine learning to their applications and uh, you know, uh, uh, catch all the latest innovations that are, are uh, coming with uh, machine learning and AI. Right. Well, it sounds like a really exciting presentation. We encourage the viewers out there to check it out. Um, so Zoran, one question I always like to ask uh, folks, especially when they're in different uh, geography, is uh, you are based in Belgrade. So if someone was to be visiting Belgrade, what is like one thing you would recommend? I'm sure there are many things to do in, in, a, city, in a big city like that, but what's like one thing you could, would recommend them to see? Or if there's a food, you say you have to check this out, what, what would that be? Well, it depends what uh, the person likes, you know. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, my friends, uh, when they come visit Belgrade, so I, I mentioned three things that I typically show them. Uh -huh. When there's a food, there is a uh, Skadarlia Street, that is a street with the uh, Bohemian Quarter with uh, lots of restaurants with, with very nice food, traditional Serbian food. Uh -huh. uh, th there is, uh, if you like uh, uh, history, there is the Kalamegdan Fortress. It's a very old fortress and it has a really fascinating history uh, since the Ottoman Empire, since Serbia was part of that and independent. And uh, if you like music, if you like blues and you like uh, jazz, I recommend that you visit the Blues Club of Blues and Beer that is also closed in uh, Skadalia Street. Okay, well, I think you've given us Plenty of food for thought. <laughs> so, yeah. Zoran, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jared.